and welcome again to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. I'm flying solo as I'm going to preview this upcoming West London Derby for Fulham against Brentford at Craven Cottage. I know we're all excited for this. It's all going to happen on Saturday, and I'm going to talk about it in just a few minutes. Also going to talk about some interesting information in regards to what's going on with Fulham. We're going to talk about what I think Fulham need in the window. I wanted to do a show. I am by myself, so this is not going to be a long show of Cottage Talk, and I wanted to do a preview of this match. We will have a post-match show on Sunday, so I do want to mention that to everyone. We will be back on Sunday. We will not have a full-time show, unfortunately. I do have a scheduling conflict and will not be able to do a show on Saturday after the match, but we will have a post-match show on Sunday, so be on the lookout for that. That should be fun. Okay, before we go on any further, I just want to mention to everyone, if you have not done this already, please do subscribe on YouTube. It certainly just helps other Fulham supporters find us, other fans of other teams find us as well, so please do subscribe on YouTube. And yes, I am solo, but many upcoming shows you'll be seeing me with many of our fellow co-hosts. So again, this is not going to be the norm, me doing a show by myself, but I wanted to do a show tonight for everyone. So that's what I'm about to do. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. So let's start with what's been going on with Fulham lately. We know about the injuries to Harry Wilson. And then of course you have the injury to Manor Solomon. Again, conflicting reports on Solomon on how long he's going to be out. I believe he put on social media that it could be a couple months. I've heard other reports. It might be longer. Well, regardless of the situation with how long Manor Solomon's going to be out, and of course, Harry Wilson, Fulham need wingers now. Nothing against who they have playing right now, Bobby Decadova Reed and Niskins Cabano. I think that they can do it if they're asked to do it. But I think you might get diminishing returns the further you go on with them. They, again, are talented players, but are they Premier League starters? Probably not but they are doing a good job. They have to play at a high end every match. They, they got to be at, at their best each match to really make an impact on the match. And listen, to be honest with you, they were in the Liverpool match, and I thought they both played decent against Wolves. But you're asking a lot from Bobby Decadova reed and Niskins Cabano to do it each and every week. Fulham need wingers. They need wingers because they are missing two right now because of injury. So there's all this speculation with these two wingers. And I do hope Fulham sign both. William actually has been in training with Fulham, just getting his fitness up. And I know he's a former Chelsea player, former Arsenal player. And I know he's 34 years old. But honestly, I would take William in a heartbeat. And if he has something to offer, think of Ryan Babel. People were giving up on him. It's not about the long term with someone like William. It's what he can do in the meantime until our wingers get healthy and get back. So I'm not against bringing in William. And uh, we'll see if Fulham end up signing him. Again, he's been at Mossberg Park training with the club, but he is not a Fulham player. Just, again, just training. So we'll see if that turns into a signing. Reportedly also Fulham have been close. Again, this is speculation to signing Justin Clivert from Roma. And again, I was hoping that this would be done already. It hasn't been done. It looks like it's getting close. And again, there's a lot of upside with this player. He hasn't lived up to expectations. And I think this is the type of player Fulham should be targeting. So again, I think this is a no-brainer for Fulham. Get Justin Clivert, bring him in. And then have this healthy competition with Harry Wilson and hopefully Manor Solomon when he comes back. Again, Fulham's need right now, wingers. They need wingers badly if they want to truly compete in the Premier League. I know we focus so much on the defense, and we should have been focusing, but they brought players in. The real need for me right now is that winger. And, of course, we can also talk about backup striker, which I'm going to get to now. So I saw this report, and Marco Silva actually talked about this in his presser, and it involves Rodrigo Muniz. 
Apparently, Rodrigo Muniz, and again, nothing's happy and nothing's final, but reportedly he is going to go out on loan to Middlesbrough. Now, I'm not against him going out on loan. In fact, I'm not against it at all. I don't think he is a Premier League striker yet, so I think a loan situation would do him good. I totally think that this is a good move for him and for the club. However, with that said, I disagree with the strategy that Fulham continue to do by sending players out on loan without getting other players in. They should get a striker in before they send out Muniz. That doesn't seem like what is going to happen here. But this is the part that drives me crazy about Fulham. Why do they continue to do this? You should be keeping players at Fulham until you get a replacement. And again, there is speculation today that Fulham are interested in Neil Maupay from Brighton and Hove Albion, former Brentford player. I remember watching him play. I think this would be a solid signing. I'm all for this. A different type of striker to Mitro. In fact, in the presser, Marco said he's looking for a different type of striker. Maybe this is where he's going on that. So I'm all for Fulham trying to get Neil Maupay. I have nothing against this. What I have an issue with is why would Fulham send Rodrigo Muniz out on loan before getting a striker? And I do not like this strategy whatsoever. I think you hurt yourself more than help yourself. We found that out two seasons ago when they let players go out on loan. They needed center backs. They're letting Alfie Mawson go out on loan. Not that I'm so crazy about Alfie Mawson. They let him go out on loan. I'm like, why are you doing this? when you have this need at center back. And eventually they got Joachim Anderson, but I don't like doing this. I think it's a bad strategy. That's just my opinion. That's just how I feel about that. I would be for Fulham signing Neil Mompe. Let's see if that happens because I, I would definitely be for that. Okay, I'm gonna, just going to share a couple of uh, comments. This is from Steve Turner, Justin Clivert. Looks a dead certain to join rumors about Neil Maupe from Brighton on a permanent can't loan as we already have Duffy on loan. Yes, you are right. And thank you very much, Steve, because again, the even journalists, I think are getting this wrong. They can't have another loan. So it would have to be a permanent deal. See, let's see. Billy Lee Gray says Maupe with Mitrovic. I'd be for that. Here's an interesting one. Pulisic is probably too Big of a fish to get on loan. Well, they can't get him on loan. That's number one. And I do think that they cannot get Pulisic. I wouldn't be against it, but I don't think that would ever happen. Hear from my friend Steve Reynolds. Why, unlike many clubs, are FFC taking so long to get transfers in? Are we being tight with the money? I don't know if they're being tight with the money. I think what they're doing is they're trying to win the deal, Steve. And I think that is... You know, again, I've seen this here w with my local teams. Sometimes that takes precedent over getting the player in, and I completely disagree with that strategy. It's about winning the deal. They have to win the deal. I don't care about winning the deal. Get the player in. And I think that's a factor in this. It's, it's actually not really all about the money. It's about winning that negotiation. I, that drives me nuts. So very good comment from you. Okay. So I'm going to move on now. Let's talk a little bit about Brentford. I'm going to start off this. And, of course, if anyone from Brentford, I'm talking about your supporters watching or listening. Listen, I want to give your side a huge amount of credit because you have a plan. I'm talking about your ownership has a very solid plan. They've seen it through, and now you are in the Premier League. You deserve to be in the Premier League. And – whether I like your club or not, I have to admire what they have accomplished and what they have built there. It's been solid. It's been incredibly solid. They have a strategy. They stick to it. I will call it a little bit of money ball, but it seems to work for Brentford. So congratulations for the way that they built their side. They deserve to be in the Premier League. They've earned it. They've earned it the way they've stuck to their model and they've earned it. And listen, they did very well in the Premier League last season. I, I thought they would go straight down. And they proved me wrong because they had a good season. They have a good foundation there at Brentford and really have built something. 
And, you know, it's funny because I, I know their arrival. And I'm not supposed to say nice things, but I have to give credit to Brentford, to what they built there. I mean, it actually is impressive. And, you know, Fulham should be looking at, look what is going on in West London and, you know, look what they have done. I'm not saying do what Brentford have done, but again, they've had success and it's time for Fulham to have their success back in the Premier League. We're now back in the Premier League. And that's a good thing. And now we have a West London Derby, a proper West London Derby in the Premier League. And honestly, I want it there. I like it there. And it should be fun on Saturday between all the supporters. And it should be a raucous crowd. It should be fun at Craven Cottage. So I'm looking forward to this match. I really am. Those are my positives on Brentford. But there are some things that, Let's just say I do want to mention because they have beaten Fulham again in the championship. They've made things difficult. There have been some draws. Fulham have not been able to beat Brentford at Craven Cottage in a very long time. So credit to Brentford. But the one thing that, again, I just listened to a podcast, the Besotted Podcast. It's actually a very good podcast. But I am noticing a, a trend here, and they even said it on the podcast talking about the playoff final and basically trying to downplay it. They're downplaying it as with the importance of this playoff final that Fulham beat Brentford. And, you know, again, I I've seen this in several places from some Brentford supporters. You're downplaying it because you lost. That's why don't give me that. It's behind closed doors. You lost. You're having a hard time accepting it. It's okay. I can accept losing to Brentford. How about you accepting losing to Fulham? It's tough. And, you know, I remember when afterwards Fulham beat Brentford, I was waiting for Besotted to do their post-match version of their show against Fulham losing in the uh, playoff final. And it took them forever to do it. And please don't tell me that it doesn't matter or Besotted would have done a podcast soon afterwards. Listen, we do podcasts after we lose. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes we wait a few days, but we do the podcast. We accept the good and the bad. I'm just saying you lost, accept it. And please don't give me the importance of the League Cup victory that you got over Fulham that next season. Sorry, playoff final, you lost. That's one to Fulham. You have some victories over Fulham. Congratulations. Give Fulham this one. We deserve it. You need to accept that you lost in the playoff final to Fulham. That's it. Call it both ways. If you're going to brag, you're going to have to take the other side. Because, again, I've seen a lot of bragging, a lot of trash talking from Brentford supporters. That's fine. You want to do that? Then take the other side. When you lose, we lost. We lost to a better side. Simple as that. You lost on that day. You don't even have to say better side. We lost on that day, and it's been a difficult pill, I've noticed, for Brentford supporters to swallow. I understand that, but go ahead and swallow it. Just just say it. Just say it. It's not going to kill you. I can admit I've said all these nice things about Brentford. You can do the same for Fulham. Come on. It's not going to kill you to do that, so I like to call it both ways. Just would like some Brentford supporters to call it both ways as well. That's just the way I view everything. I have respect for what Brentford have built. And I understand the trash talking. I get all the rivalry. I I get all that. But I will always admit when Fulham have lost and I will blame my side and I'll give credit to the other side. Just give a little credit to Fulham. It's not going to kill you. That's just my point on that. Okay. Coming up next, I'm going to break down this match for Fulham against Brentford. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for sticking with me on this short abbreviated preview of this upcoming match for Fulham against Brentford. And let's start here. Let's talk about strengths and weaknesses of both sides. And what I've done here, and I'm going to share this graphic with everyone. What I've done here is I went to whoscored.com and I got their breakdown of this math, the strengths of weaknesses 
of both teams. So I'm going to share that on my screen in just a second because I think it's interesting to compare where the strengths and weaknesses of both sides are. So let me just pull this up and you can see this. So here are the strengths and weaknesses of Brentford and Fulham. So let's start with Fulham's strengths compared to Brentford's weaknesses and see if we can find something here that Fulham supporters can hang their hat on. And I think there's one that we can look at right away. But let's look at Fulham's strengths. Aerial duels, stealing the ball from the opposition, attacking down the wings, and defending set pieces. Brentford's weaknesses. Now, there's only two weaknesses for Brentford to their credit. And it's defending against long shots, which you don't get a lot from Fulham, but aerial duels. This, to me, is huge. Fulham have already shown that they are strong in the air, especially with Mitro. You get crosses in the box to Mitro, he's going to do a number on you. And this is a weakness of Brentford. This is where Fulham really need to target. They need to get balls in the box against Brentford on Saturday. Not only that, they need to be excellent on set pieces because this is another weakness of Brentford. I watched the highlights of the Leicester City match and then listening to the show Besotted, they were talking about how weak they've been on set pieces in the preseason, and it continued against uh, Leicester City. Off of a corner, a goal was scored. Again, Fulham have been excellent in their set pieces, especially on corners, and this is a place that Fulham need to take advantage of. So, so again, a strength of Fulham going against a weakness of Brentford. But again, the flip side here is Brentford's strength, so let's talk about that finishing scoring chances, creating long shot opportunities, coming back from losing positions. They're excellent at that. And Fulham have been bad when they have gotten ahead. They've given up the goals. And I'll talk about that in the weaknesses. Creating chances through through balls, counterattacks, attacking set pieces, and protecting the lead. And that goes with Fulham's weaknesses, avoiding individual errors, protecting the lead, which Fulham have not been good at, and keeping possession of the ball very weak. I disagree with that but the protecting the lead weakness is an issue and see this is where Brentford could take advantage of Fulham because again they do play good from behind I want to give them credit on that and uh, against Leicester City they came back but they also played good from ahead as well as you saw against Manchester United so again some very interesting topics for me to bring up to everyone so I just wanted to share that so after talking about strengths and weaknesses, I now want to go to my three keys to victory. And I think this is uh, what I'm looking at for foam against Brentford. So let me, uh, let me find my three keys to victory and then we'll go through that. So this is what I'm looking at as a foam supporter. As I already mentioned this foam set pieces need to be key against Brentford. Now we've already seen that foam, have been very good at set pieces. They have all kinds of different ones that they've been using, especially on corners, and they need to be aggressive and they need to be pinpoint on set pieces. This is a weakness of Brentford. They can take advantage of Brentford on set pieces. That goes along with aerial duels, but I want to just talk about set pieces. Now, my second key is this. This will be interesting. They do play a 3-5-2. I wanted to mention that as well. They're very good at pressing. They're very good at pressing. So what do you do? I'm going to say this, and we'll see what happens in the match. But I would do something similar that Fulham did against Liverpool, and that's to try to avoid the pressing of Brentford, meaning especially they should not be pointing the ball off from the back. That's just my opinion. Marco Silva might have different thoughts on that, but I would take the strategy against Liverpool and play to the strengths of Fulham the aerial prowess of Mitrovic, and just kick it long. Just kick it long to Mitro or kick it in the channels. Play to your weaknesses and go against the pressing of Brentford. Avoid it. Avoid the pressing. And that might really help you in this match because I think that sets up everything that Brentford want to do. They're also very good down the right, and that's a weakness of foam, and I also want to mention that as well. That's something really to watch out for is – Brentford's play down the right. 
Final key to this match for me would be Zhao Polian needs to be a force in the match. Not only does he need to really just take control of the match, but he needs to protect that back four. I think what he has done with his tackling, he has really helped out Tim Ream and Tosin a great deal. He's taken the pressure off them. And I that's why I think he is key. I think he sets everything up for Fulham. If he's doing his job, it then just festers to the rest of the players on the pitch. He is a major key in this match, especially against Brentford. If he's doing his job, it could be a good day for Fulham. Okay, very good. All right. So that's going to lead to ending this very quick episode with predictions. What is your prediction for the match? I'm curious what everyone is predicting for the match. I put up a poll and I put it up pretty late, but I'm going to share right here on my screen what the predictions were here. So just give me a second. I will share the predictions here. So here we go. So here are the predictions on the Cottage Talk Twitter page. I did this a little bit earlier. I only have 120 votes. And the prediction was, what is your prediction for Fulham against Brentford? Win, 55.8% draw, 24.2% loss, 20%. Again, not that many votes, but it just shows me that Fulham supporters still feel strongly that they can get a win in this match. I don't think this is a disrespect to Brentford. I think this has more to do with a belief in what they've seen from Fulham. And I also want to mention this as well, because I, I know I have been tough on the guys from Besotted, but to be honest with you, I thought their last episode, they were giving Fulham a lot of credit. They were basically saying that this is a different Fulham side. So I think they realize after watching the Liverpool match that Fulham are for real, and it's not the same team that they've played before. So, well, that's going to lead to ending the show with my prediction. So I'm going to go with two to one to Fulham. I feel good about this. I'm going to say a brace for Metro. They're going to win two to one. And I say that they're going to go up two nil, and then they're going to give up a goal. And we're going to hold on for dear life, but I'm going with a two to one victory for Fulham. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. And again, I just want to thank everyone that has watched and listened cottage talk. This is our 11th season. And we're going to be doing many more shows. And I'm still getting back in the swing of things, coming back from a vacation last week of taking my daughter to Oklahoma and getting everyone on the same page. Everyone's coming back from their holidays. But you're going to see regular co-hosts on a regular basis moving forward. But I wanted to do a show today. So that's why I'm giving you, me, myself, and I, Russ Goldman, to do a show previewing this match but we will have a post-match show on Sunday but I just can't thank everyone enough for their thoughts on the match and then of course watching and listening to Cottage Talk okay one last thing before we go again please do subscribe to Cottage Talk on YouTube tell your friends we really want to build up this YouTube channel and as always my name is Russ Goldman thank you as always for watching and listening to Cottage Talk.